Yep. We're going to go on to our next subject now, and that is evacuation. And we thought as a group, um, as a civic association, that it's a good idea to really have it clear where we go, when we need to evacuate, what to expect when you get there, and also the need to evacuate uh, with Shore Acres perhaps a little bit early, because when the water really gets life-threatening is going to be way after you can actually get off the island. So as a civic association, we're gonna be looking very closely when we have a storm like we did this last time at what is going on with the tides, what's going on with the wind direction, what's going on with the storm direction, what's going on with all these different factors that are unique to shore acres and call it, uh, say you probably need to get out of here. And Shore Acres is unique in that um, we are right on the coast. Um, we are very uh, low as far as sea level goes, and we only have three ways on and off the island. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to Amber, um, who's gonna talk about what we do when we evacuate. All right, thank you, Gary. Um, thank you. Hello, everybody, Amber Boulding. Office of Emergency Management with the City of St. Pete. So I wish there was a, a, a quick and easy answer, you know, or explanation um, to address the, you know, the, the questions and really the issues at hand. And unfortunately, there's just not. Um, and, and I can't, you know, really answer them, you know, without giving the context behind it as well. So I did put together a presentation and my apologies if it looks like a full preparedness you know, presentation, but it's just because we don't know what storms are going to do. We know every storm is unique. Um, you know, it's, it's how strong is it? How close is it? Um, is it coming from the east? Is it coming from the west? Uh, tons of questions. And at the end of the day, it's all forecasted anyway. So it could all be wrong, right? Um, so all of those things are taken into consideration. So I, I did put together a, a quick presentation. I hope it's quick. Um, so let me see if I can get that up. And Gary, can you hear me okay? Yes, hear you just fine. Okay, thank you. I've been having some, some audio issues. All right, can everybody see the presentation? Yes. Okay. Let's see. I'm sorry, that. that's our birds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think this is why we're here today is the lessons learned. And that's the silver lining really of any event that happens, whether to us or to our neighbors, you know, somewhere else in the state or on the Gulf Coast is we look at what happened and we learn from it. So, you know, really today we're talking about what we learned from Ada and not just from a residential standpoint, but for us as a city. Um, what we learned and how we can better communicate and, and think through different, you know, consequences and, and communication strategies. So to really understand the decision making behind a lot of the evacuations and shelter, um, I just want to talk real quick about some terminology. Um, a lot of it, you, you know, you may know um, or you may be familiar with, but it's very important. Um, the versus watch versus warning. And we all know we get lots of watches and warnings throughout um, the hurricane season, whether it's, you know, hur hurricane watch, tornado watch, um, tropical storm watch, flood watch, storm surge watch, watches and warnings for everything. But it's important to know that a watch is gonna come before your warning. So a watch means that those conditions are possible in the next 48 hours. So if you hear a tropical storm watch, it means we could have tropical storm conditions in the next 48 hours. Um, or storm surge watch, we could have storm surge of X amount of feet, the National Weather Service will give us that number, National Hurricane Center, um, within the next 48 hours. Now, when we advance to a warning, that means you can anticipate those things happening. So they think that we're gonna get those conditions in the next 36 hours. So if it's a storm surge watch, that means your clock is running, you know, so you have at least 36 hours. Um, and I say at least, but as we know, storms shift and we did not get 36 hours um, with Ada, we got much less. Um, but, uh, if we're in a tropical storm warning, you expect those conditions. And when we get into hurricane warnings, um, we'll talk about planning a little bit. Hurricane watch, you wanna make sure you got all of those plans ready, you know where you're gonna go. 
um, if you're ordered to evacuate, once you get into a hurricane warning, you can be looking for those mandatory evacuation orders. Um, so there's just some of the process behind the scenes there. Um, evacuation zone versus flood zone, two different things can happen individual of each other. And um, I think that's very important for shore acres especially, because um, you can see flooding occurring in the streets, you know, in the absence of storm surge. And storm surge is directly, you know, equated with evacuation zones. So um, flood and evacuation zone is not equal. Um, if your evacuation zone is A, that has nothing to do with your flood zone, which is issued by FEMA and has to do with your flood insurance. Mandatory evacuation versus recommended evacuation. This one is also very, very, very important for our flood prone areas. Um, a mandatory evacuation is issued typically when storm surge values are anticipated to be five to six feet or greater. Um, that's when you're gonna get your mandatory A evacuation. Um, and, and there's a lot of factors that go into that too. Don't quote me saying, you know, if it's five feet, we didn't get an evacuation. Um, but it's one of the decision-making tools. So generally around five to six feet is when we start talking about that mandatory A evacuation. Now, when it falls short of that, our flood prone areas are still gonna be affected. So Shore Acres, Riviera Bay, some of these lower you know, lying levels, you know, maybe around Lake Megory, um, those are still our flood um, prone areas. And so you may hear a recommended evacuation. And uh, believe it or not, there was a recommended evacuation during ADA, I just don't think it was communicated well. Um, and it may not have been called a recommended evacuation, but it was a recommended shelter, which you'll see next. So recommended shelter, generally there's a shelter around mid or south county, and then a shelter around north county. And that's for all those folks in the flood prone area or in a mobile home that don't feel safe in their home, or they know that their home could take on water. So that shelter is open for them. So for Ada, um, the Wellman Exchange actually opened for anyone that didn't want to shelter at home uh, during the storm. We talked about storm surge. That's the level of water that's going to come in off the Gulf. Um, and it's, it's driven by wind. So where flood may come from, you know, rain, you know, on top of high tide, things like that. The storm surge is yeah, that amount of water that's coming in, um, being pushed in from the wind off that storm. So the storm surge could be timed way different um, than a landfalling storm. So we want to pay attention to the messages that's being pushed out. Um, with the National Weather Service, National Hurricane Center, and then Pinellas County and the city about that storm surge timing. And then finally, in the cone is really important. A lot of times, and you know, we're guilty here as well at emergency management, you know, are we in the cone? Oh, we're not the cone, we're fine. Um, and it's just not the case. So in the cone just means anywhere within that big cone, um, the eye of the storm could lie. So if you're outside of that cone, that still means that the eye of the storm is following the line of the cone and you're within that wind field. And that's exactly what happened to us during ADA. So we weren't in the three day cone. Um, we were for a while, then we went out, then we went in, then we went back out. Um, but even as it passed, we were never actually in the cone. We were just outside the cone um, because they knew it wasn't going to landfall on us um, or they didn't anticipate it to, but we still had some pretty big effects from it. So don't focus on in the cone. Um, anywhere around the cone um, could deliver some pretty good effects from a storm. Um, and we know, again, it's all forecast. So it's somebody somewhere's best guess at what's gonna happen. So three big steps um, to make sure you're prepared. And I'm gonna run through these real quick, but they all have to do with, are you going to stay or are you gonna go? When are you gonna go? How are you gonna go? And where are you gonna go? So the first is to, um, Stay informed because, as I said, every single storm is very, very different. So you need to know you, where we're at. Are we in a watch? Are we in a warning? Is that changing from day to day? Um, with Ada, if you remember, you know, we were in the cone for a while, and then it, it kept shifting out into the Gulf and getting further and further away from us. And then it had you know, the forecast had that storm stalling out in the Gulf, and then all of a sudden. The forecast did change from the, the afternoon forecast to the 11 p.m. forecast had it picking up forward direction. So it was actually going to affect us a full 24 hours faster, but also moved a lot closer. So, you know, when we talk about that 36 hour warning, that kind of went out the window at that point. And that warning was issued very quick um, the night before that or the, the day of I'm sorry, the day before we got the um effects that next afternoon into evening so make sure that you're following all of these 
these agencies on social media. Um, they all have Facebook next door and Twitter accounts. So Pinellas County, St. Pete, make sure you follow St. Pete PD, um, National Weather Service, Tampa Bay. Mayor's Action Center is, there's the number during the day, it's the Mayor's Action Center. Once we switch to emergency operations, that's the Citizens Information Center. So you can always call them and ask about any kind of evacuation orders or shelter locations. Um, and finally, make sure you sign up for Alert Pinellas. Um, you can find this from the city's website or from the county's website. Uh, but this is going to opt you into a texting and call service that if your home ever goes into any of these alerts um, or if there's any severe weather uh, for your area, it's going to send you that text message, which is very, very helpful. And just a point on lesson learned. Um, from my end, what I learned um, in the absence of a mandatory evacuation, we need to work with you guys to make sure you know the risk is communicated. Uh, because sometimes I think the message is going out okay and, and you got the message and I don't think that happens. Um, we just didn't do a good enough job. So that's something I'm happy to work with Gary and you know everyone else on your team. Um, as we start getting these messages from the National Hurricane Center that you know we're expecting a higher than average you know, storm surge, we'll start pushing that information out to you so you can disseminate that um, among the residents. I think, I think that will help. So know your risk. Um, we know storm surge. I mentioned that storm surge, typically we don't do mandatory evacuations countywide until we reach about a five. And I say we, um, city doesn't have jurisdiction over evacuations. That's all Pinellas County. Um, so whatever Pinellas County orders is what the city will follow. So typically evacuations are ordered uh, mandatory around five to six um, feet of storm surge. But you need to know what your own home's elevation is. Um, so what that means is if you look at your flood certificate or you, know, you have an evaluation done and you know that you are five feet um, above sea level and a projected storm of four to six feet is supposed to come in you know that you could be in danger. So make sure you know what your specific home's elevation is and what your risk is, so you can fully understand what your plan is to be in and this should you stay or should you go. Um, also your vulnerability to flooding, this could be, you know, make sure looking at the tides and, um, you know, historically what you've seen at your home. Um, look at the wind speed. Are you in a newer home or are you in an older home that has, you know, maybe less wind mitigation? Um, Medical needs, do you have pets, do you have kids? All of these are going to all influence um, what your plan is gonna be and if you should stay or if you should go. There's a website there at the bottom. Um, this is the Know Your Zone application for Pinellas County. So you'll go to that website, you'll punch in your address. It'll show you what your evacuation zone is, um, where your closest shelter will be, if it's open, all of those good things. There's a lot on this slide. I'm not going to go over all of it, but this, these are all things that need to be in your plan. Um, if an evacuation ca is called, what are you going to do? Um, when are you going to go? So in general, evacuations have to be called well in advance of when we expect to see the water. So Gary, I heard you say that, you know, maybe Shore Acres should go earlier. Um, and, and if everything goes according to plan, you know, we shouldn't need that because it's called well in advance. Our problem is, um, is these storms you know, may change last minute. And um, so all that should be taken into consideration in what your individual plan will be. Um, so when you hear an evacuation, it's got a begin time and an end time because the county has clearance times for each evacuation level. So for an evac A, it might be 24 hours. So if, you know, uh, conditions are expected to deteriorate at noon um, on Wednesday, then we have to call that mandatory evacuation by noon tomorrow on Tuesday to give 24 hours for people to leave. Um, and if you advance into those evac levels, B, C, D, that clearance time widens. Um, but again, we're at the mercy of the perfect forecast. Um, so if your evacuation zone is not being told to evacuate, consider staying in your home, but only if you determine you're outside of that, that forecasted surge range. And when in doubt, go somewhere else. I mean, I put on there, check on your neighbors, friends, family. I think you guys have a great, um, you know, circle there and, and support system in Shore Acres. 
So if you go, make sure we're going to talk about where you can go. Um, I know Gary asked about shelters and what your shelter is going to be, and I will talk about that. Um, but shelters shouldn't always be your first uh, go-to. Um, have a plan, have a backup plan, and a backup plan, because, you know, we have to be flexible. Um, know what those options are. We're going to, you know, uh, go kits. You can look online at um, either our city's page or the county's page to look for different um, go kit items. Gas, you know, during hurricane season, consider a half tank empty. You know, always keep it above half a tank. And there's um, a link there to register for special needs if you need. Uh, this is host home is always going to be your first priority. If you choose to evacuate, so you've looked at your elevation certificate is, you know what your flooding potential is, you know what that magic number might be. Um, so you're ready to go if, if you get into that situation. Host home is always going to be ideal, which is a friend or a family's house. Um, if there's a church on high ground, you know, that wants to, you know, be a residential shelter. You always want to try to go somewhere um, that might not be a public shelter necessarily. Um, one that's going to decompress, you know, other shelter space for um, those that may not have any other options. Um, and then also you can always plan together on what you're going to do. Um, with COVID-19, just, you know, keep those considerations of, you know, having sanitizer, face masks if you need them, sleeping, separate sleeping arrangements. Another option is a hotel, motel, or Airbnb. Um, personally, this is my family's plan. We've got a hotel identified in a non-evac zone in St. Pete. This is from my lessons learned with Irma, where I actually chose to have my family leave the area and went to Jacksonville, and it was just a mess. So um, based on my lessons learned, they won't leave the city again um, unless it's, you know, something catastrophic that I don't feel they should stay. But we have a, a hotel identified in a non-evac zone that takes pets and has a kitchenette. Um, you can, I can schedule that hotel and I can always cancel it with no charge um, within 24 hours of the uh, check-in time. So do your homework and see if that's an option for you and make that your plan. So if we get in a five-day cone or a three-day cone, you're calling that hotel or you're going on, you know, hotels.com and you're going to go ahead and book that with the option of canceling it if the store moves away. Uh, you can go out of town. Um, this is always an option. Just remember, it takes a long time to get out of town. And there's a lot of logistics involved. Um, if you can just get out of um, low-lying areas and into a non-evac area, um, make sure you consider that. So finally, public shelters. Um, and, and what I really want to get across here is, you know, public shelter is considered your lifeboat. Um, it should always be your, your last priority or, or your last option. Uh, make the others your, your priority destinations if you can, but it's there for you. It's there to keep you safe. It's going to be a safe haven. Um, it's going to be crowded. It's going to be hot and stinky probably, um, but they're going to do everything uh, they can to make sure that you ride out that storm safely and you're able to get home safely. I put a link there that shows all the emergency shelters in the county. So this is one of those questions I, I can't simply answer saying, where where is your shelter location if you're ordered to evacuate? Because the answer is it depends. Um, there's several shelters identified in the county, depending on what the evacuation order is. Some of them may open and others will close. So for example, um, the closest shelter to you that will open most likely, and a mandatory A will be Sexton Elementary. But now, as the storm is more severe, and let's say that evacuation zone is actually a, a evac level C, then Sexton Elementary is no longer a safe option. So that one goes off the table, and they'll they'll increase um, shelter options elsewhere in higher elevation areas. So there's not an easy answer for it. I will say that. Generally, in a recommended evacuation, it's going to be the Wellman Exchange. Um, in a, a mandatory A, normally Sexton is open. Um, Gibbs High School over on 34th is, is a non-evac um, zone. It's a shelter that's usually open and it, has, it can hold a lot of people, so that's usually an option. But go back to that Know Your Zone website in Pinellas County, punch in your address, and it will show you what which shelters are open that's closest to you. So once we get closer to, you know, these storms and, and we're in cones, go to that website and it's going to pull up the closest open shelter available to you and if it has capacity. This is my last slide. Preparation through education and planning is less costly than learning through tragedy, um, which is our lessons learned. So 
make sure we, you know, you do your homework. If there's anything I can help with or on my end that I can do to better communicate with you to make sure you guys are ready, I definitely want to do it. Um, you know, we don't we don't want senseless tragedy because you know I wasn't communicating right or or something like that. So uh, make sure you're talking to me. I'll make sure I'm talking to you. And Simper Gumby is is always flexible because we just never know. <laughs> and some resources. Okay, thank you, Amber. Um, any question, I, I had a question to start it off with. Um, at what point do the shelters um, become available? Is to, Does an evacuation order have to be um, issued for that to happen? Generally, yes. So the decision is made that if, once at the county level, the decision is made that they're going to order an evacuation. That notification will generally go to the school board first because all shelters are located in schools and they need time to get kids home and to prep the shelter. So that's mm. generally a six hour or so lead time um, for those to get up and running and then the announcement will be made. So shelters won't be open before a mandatory evacuation is issued. They'll coincide generally. Okay. Other questions? Thank you, Amber. That was really informative. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Amber. And and I, I like that you wrote it's a uh, um, it's not a cruise ship. It's a uh, uh, what was it? <laughs> Ferry. <laughs> it's a lifeboat, not a cruise ship. <laughs> lifeboat. I gotcha. Yeah. And yeah, that uh, shelters are the last option. And perhaps something we can do as a community is, is if we have friends outside the community, that would be a guest home. Um, we could we could do that as well, especially for the people that, that are gonna have, have um, you know, their house flood uh, when, when others don't. Absolutely. And they, the county has a host home program and I was hoping they'd be able to make it out tonight and they couldn't. Um, so I'll follow up with them and see, you know, what that entails and if that's something that we could modify, you know, even for the Shore Acres residents to run a, a host home program. Um, okay. We can try. Okay. And that'd be great Gary. to get a list. Um, and then would they be kind of willing, uh, gotcha, Kevin, would they be willing to take people even though there's not an evacuation or I guess that would be uh, from home to home? I, I would think it would be from home to home, a decision, you know, to make it, but really that's the gap. And, and after Ada, I started calling it these gray area storms because they're the ones that aren't quite meeting thresholds, you know, to pull the trigger on things. Um, it's just that, that gray area and it's, it's so unfortunate. So I think filling that gap is, is where we're needed. So finding a, a host, host home program that, that could fill that gap, I think would okay. be a good start. Okay. Kevin? Yeah, I have two questions. Um, the first one is, um, we have a lot of pets in the neighborhood. Uh, what do people do with their pets during an evacuation? So kind of the same um, concept. I mean, there's a pet shelter, a pet friendly shelter. I believe that Gibbs High School um, is the pet shelter. So um, <laughs> They request that you register your pet in advance. So that's all through the PinellasCounty.org forward slash emergency. Um, all that information is there. So part of the pre-planning has to include the pets and what you're gonna do. Um, if it's a pet friendly shelter, just know the limitations there. Um, it's only cats and dogs. So what if you have exotic pets, what do you do? Um, so working through that, talking with your um, veterinarian um, if needed to see if, if they have any options um, or boarding a pet at a, a high and dry, you know, boarding facility. There's options out there, but it's we got to think through them now and not wait till we get in that clone. The second. So there's a whole question, web page dedicated to it. Uh, during Ada, like you said, it it came quickly, uh, and one of the biggest complaints that I've heard is that we didn't have any sandbags available uh, for those homes that needed to to protect them. Is there a, even if there's something anywhere near or possible uh, that it might hit us, that we can get those out a couple of days earlier and in 
um, mm -hmm. multiple locations because before it's been on 62nd by the golf course. Uh, maybe we need something actually in the neighborhood, maybe at the, the mini park by the fire station to where people can so, uh, get those. So sandbags are available year round. So what I would recommend is you go out tomorrow and you get them or the next day. Um, get them now while you can. Um, they're at our transportation division over on 9th Avenue. Um, 9th, Ave or, uh, 9th Avenue and MLK Street is actually just west of MLK um, at the traffic division. And sorry, I don't have that address in front of me. Um, but that's also on our website, stpeprepares.com. But you can go any day, 7.30 to 3.30, and go pick up those bags. So that's what's recommended. Um, with Ada, we, we, we turned on the, the sandbags for a few hours until the, the winds were predicted to start, and then we had to shut it back down. Um, so that was definitely a limitation. Um, as far as locations, I'm not sh I don't know. Um, I'm happy to talk to our stormwater department about that. I know we have three locations that have been identified in the county, which is that 62nd Avenue location, as you mentioned. Um, if anybody got sandbags during Irma, you know what a nightmare that was on 62nd Avenue. Um, so part of that improvement process is we've, um, we've purchased three machines called the sandbagger um, that um, will fill uh, sandbags much, much, much faster. Um, and we've improved our process a whole lot. So um, right now the process doesn't even involve you getting out of your vehicle to drive through a sandbag. Um, area that will move much faster. So you pull through, you pop your trunk, we load your bags, you drive off. It's according nice. to plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if that's all the questions, Amber, thank you so much. And we appreciate you, you. looking out for us and looking out for our safety. And um, yeah, hopefully this hurricane season, um, you know, yeah, <laughs> we'll make it through again. <laughs> and <problem>. and <laughs> in, in particular, we, we appreciate you knowing about Shore Acres and, and how kind of vulnerable we feel in particular with the evacuation zone and things like that. And through this storm season, um, you know, Facebook will be up, our Instagram will be up. And um, our neighborhood really came together during the last um, uh, Hurricane Ida, or Ada, uh, however you pronounce that. We we really we really came together, and and we'll we'll do it again. You know, um, not hopefully, but if it happens, uh, we'll we'll be together again, and, and appreciate your assistance. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Amber, very much.